Hi, welcome to Blender Tutor. My name is Tom, and today we're going to be going over creating this cool dissolving object effect using the cloth sim in Blender 2.91. With this effect, you could get something that looks like this, kind of like an outer shell dissolving. You can also use it to destroy the earth. And of course, most importantly, you can use it to kill Spider-Man. And before we get started, I do wanna just give a shout out to Dylan Neal, who was the inspiration for this tutorial. I actually learned this effect from one of his uh, quick tutorials on his channel, where he did a ghost in the shell effect in Blender. I would recommend watching his tutorial and checking out his channel. He has a lot of cool stuff over there. All right, now let's get started. So I'm gonna recreate my Instagram post with the cube. And to do that, we can actually keep the default cube, but let's name it inner cube and then duplicate it and call that and call that outer cube. With the outer cube, go into edit mode, hit subdivide, and let's subdivide it by like 10. Now you can see right now, since we have two cubes that are the same size, they're overlapping and you're getting this weird look on the mesh. Since the cube is a really basic shape, with the outer cube selected, we could just scale that up a little bit and it won't be overlapping anymore. But if you have a more complex shaped object, you can add a displace modifier and then just give it a really small strength of like 0.025 or something, just enough that it is no longer intersecting with the other mesh. Next up, you're gonna go ahead and create a particle system on the outer cube. And there's a few things we're gonna have to do. For one, just set the start and end frame to zero. You just want all of the instances of the particles all at once, because we're gonna be using that to create the floating dissolving shell which also means you can go into the physics tab and turn off physics. One other thing you could do real quick is go under source and use modifier stack. That's not gonna really affect our cube. If you're using a more complex shape and you have like a subsurf modifier or something like that, this will help the particles start at the correct location. I'm also gonna turn off even distribution and you could mess around with the seed. The other thing to keep in mind is the number of particles will affect how many pieces of the shell are kind of flaking off as the simulation bakes. So the more particles you have, the smaller the pieces will be and the more of them you'll have. So if you don't need that many, you can actually just lower it for, for this cube. I think for my final cube in the other one, I actually had quite a high number. I think I had like 10,000 or something. Um, for this, I'll leave it at a thousand for the tutorial, but you can mess around with that number. Next, go back to the modifier panel and we're gonna add an explode modifier. And let's go into edge mode. And on the explode modifier, click cut edges. And what this is gonna do is cut up the mesh of the cube to be cut, uh, to be turned into the pieces that are gonna float away. One other thing I do for the particles just to make the scene a little easier to look at is I will go under render and go from halo to none. We don't really need to see the particles in the scene. Okay, so collapse that explode modifier. And now we're gonna add a vertex weight proximity. And this is a really cool modifier that basically allows us to animate the simulation so it doesn't all start at once, it'll happen over time. We're gonna to get to that in a little bit, but first let's go ahead and go into edit mode and let's create a vertex group. So make sure all of your vert vertices are selected. So just hit A and then create a vertex group. We could call this pinned. Make sure to assign it. Now you can go back to object mode. And in that vertex weight proximity modifier, you could actually now assign the pinned group to that vertex group right here. Next up, we're gonna add a cloth sim onto our outer cube. And let's just go ahead and right from the bat, just pin group, set that to pinned. Now the rest of these settings in the cloth sim are gonna depend on what you want your effect to look like. When I did the earth, I didn't actually want it to look like a bunch of cloth pieces that were kind of moving like that. I just wanted to look like it was shattered. So I think I left pretty much the default settings, but I wanted it to look like kind of just pieces of hard object that were shattering. But if you do wanna get that kind of cloth fluid motion, you can select one of these presets up here. So silk, I believe, would be the most soft setting. 
And you can see that changes the vertex mass from 0.3 to 0.15. I'm also gonna turn up the step quality to eight. And then we could turn down the air viscosity setting. What that does is it's basically the thickness of the air in the simulation for the cloth. So if you have a lower setting for the air viscosity, the object will move quicker through it. I'll do like 0.3. A couple of the other options to consider are these bending for the stiffness and damping. The other thing I did in my animation was in the shrinking factor, I set it to negative 0.25. And what that does is if you set it to a negative number, it will actually stretch out the material or the mesh of the cloth after it is in the simulation. So if we go look at my animation real quick, you could see that as the outer shell is dissolving, the pieces are growing over time. That's basically what this option adjusts. You could also set it to a positive number and it'll actually shrink. That's it's called the shrinking factor. So it'll make everything kind of shrink a little more. Uh, a couple other options. I'm gonna bring up the quality of collisions to like five and I'm gonna turn on self collisions. That way if the particles do hit each other in the air, they will not intersect. And the last thing we're gonna to wanna to do, at least for the effect that I'm doing, is I'm gonna bring gravity down to zero and that way it won't just fall as soon as it starts dissolving. But if you do look at that, my initial animation, you could see that at a certain point in the simulation, I do turn gravity back on. To do that, let's just go up to like frame 90 in the timeline. So let's hit I, so it's set to zero right now. Let's go forward one frame to 91, set that to one, hit I again. Now that is basically turning gravity from zero to full gravity, which means we'll have to let the simulation go past that point so gravity can actually affect the particles. For this, I'll do like 150 for the length, just so it doesn't take forever to bake this. Once you're happy with your settings for the cloth, actually, let's adjust the cache also. So let's set it to 150, or just set it to the length of your timeline, basically. But we will not bake that quite yet. If you're liking this tutorial, make sure to subscribe for more tutorials. Next week, I'll be doing a soft body physics tutorial. And last week, I just did a Mantaflow fluid simulation tutorial. So check that out now if you haven't already. A couple other things we're gonna have to do for this to work. Let's add in a wind force field. I'm gonna bring that down a little bit. And this is something that you will definitely have to experiment with because depending on the weight of your cloth sim, the wind needs to be stronger or less strong to affect the particles. So I'll start it at like 150 for strength. For flow, I'll set that to 10. And then I'm also gonna bring in a turbulence just so we get some interesting movement of the particles. And I'll set the strength to 25, size to one, flow to 0.5. And this is something I might change a couple times depending on how it looks after I bake it. Once we have brought those in though, we can go back to our outer cube object. So once you're happy with the settings for your force fields, we're gonna bring in a empty. Now you could either do a sphere or a cube. Either of those should work fine. I'm gonna bring that up you're gonna to wanna to scale it up so it's bigger, I would say a couple times bigger than your actual object. And let's start on frame one, have it up here, hit I for location. I'm gonna bring it forward 20 frames and then bring that down so it's fully encompassing our object. Hit I, location. And you basically just want to animate onto our object. So now let's click on our outer cube object, go back to the modifiers, and let's actually name our empty I'm gonna just call it dissolve object. Now let's click on our outer cube object, go to the modifiers and under the vertex weight proximity modifier, under target object, we're gonna choose that dissolve object or empty. Then we're gonna set proximity mode to geometry um, for highest and lowest. You're basically for highest, we'll set that to the number of the scale of our empty. So you could just go to scale, click on any of them, hit control C, and then I'll just paste that in here. And then basically lowest is gonna be between lowest and highest. That's gonna be the gradient at which the your object starts to dissolve. So the, so the greater distance between the lowest and highest, the more of a gradient the effect will have. So if I were to set this to like 3.5, that's gonna be a pretty small gradient. We could also set fall off over here to smooth. And now if you go into weight paint and you scrub through your timeline, you can see kind of how big that gradient is. And if I were to bring that down, you're gonna see it is a, a more soft gradient instead of a harsh line. So we could go back to object mode. And then once you've done that, 
you can go ahead and bake your cloth simulation. Okay, and once that's baked, we can scrub through that, watch our simulation, and you can see at a certain point the gravity turns back on. But right now it's not actually interacting with our inner cube. And you can also see these all look rather stiff and um, flat shaded. So we could go and select the particles. I'm gonna hit shade smooth and then go under normals and hit auto smooth. Also, if the speed of everything isn't really moving in a way you like, you can adjust the speed of the wind or the strength of the wind or the turbulence or any other force fields you've added. But the other thing you might notice is it's not really like they're, they're dissolving and moving, but they're not really bending very much. So what I actually ended up doing is after everything I added basically between the vertex weight proximity and the cloth sim, I added a subdivision surface modifier and I set that to simple just to give it some more geometry. And I'll bring that up one. We're basically gonna have to go delete our bake and we're gonna have to rebake it. But before we do that, let's select our inner cube, go to the physics tab and add a collision modifier. And then for thickness outer under soft body and cloth down here, just set that to 0 0.001. That way when the cloth does interact with our inner cube, it isn't gonna like get pushed away because the boundary is too thick. So now let's select our outer cube again, go to the cloth physics and delete all bakes and then bake that one more time. If you're liking these tutorials and you'd like access to my project files to kind of dig deeper into how I'm doing everything, check out my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash blender tutor, where you can get access to my project files, material packs, 4K wallpaper downloads, as well as shout outs in my tutorial videos. I always post the newest Blender tutorial project files the day the tutorial goes live on YouTube. All right, so now that that's baked, let's scrub through that. And you could see that while these aren't necessarily bending that much more, you could see there's a little more movement now that we added that subdivision service modifier. And now when it drops, you could see it actually interacting with the inner cube. The other thing we might want to do on that inner cube is add some more friction. I'm going to bring that up to like 20. And the other thing I'll do real quick is I'll just add a floor in. I'll add a collision modifier to that. I'll do the same thing. I'll bring that thickness outer to 0 0.001, friction up, and I'm gonna bake that one more time. And actually one thing I forgot to mention is I'm going to also turn off the wind and the turbulence modifiers the same time I turn off the, or I turn on the gravity. So I'm gonna to go to frame 90 and I will just set a keyframe on the strength and the flow for the wind and also on the strength and the flow for the turbulence. Then I'll go forward one frame Set that to zero for the turbulence. And I'll do that for the wind as well. And now I'm gonna bake that one more time. Okay, now that that is done baking, we can scrub through and watch that. And everything seems to be working. Cool, so that is the tutorial. I hope you learned something. Um, this is a lot of fun to play around with. I would definitely recommend just experimenting with a lot of different stuff. I also just wanted to show an example of what it looked like with different amounts of particles. So the one on the left is the one we just did, and the one on the right, I brought the particle count down to 200. Let's just play that. So you can see that changes it quite a bit. So I would definitely consider what's gonna work best for your scene. And also the more particles you have, the more simulation it takes, the harder it is on your computer. So that is another limitation you might have, but I don't think that really matters because it looks cool either way. So just have fun playing with this and thanks for watching. I will see you guys in the next tutorial.